In this presentation, we will work a problem in Excel calculating the payback period and the break even time. We're going to have our data up top. We're going to use that data in order to fill in the worksheet down below in the blue area. We do recommend when you're working any type of problem to put your Excel data up top in the format of text and then the numbers in a different cell so we can refer back to it, making it as easy as possible for us to use the data manipulate the data think about the data here is what the data is we have new equipment consideration that's going to be our question should we have a new equipment or not purchase new equipment the investment is going to be two hundred and forty nine thousand. the payback period that is required we're going to say is two years so we want the payback period to be two years in other words we want this to in essence pay back for itself within a two-year period in order for us to accept such a project or any type of project of this nature return on investment that we're requiring is going to be at nine percent so we require a nine percent return on investment so here we have our periods we've got one two three four and five and the cash flows related to them so we note that we don't have the same cash flows so it's not going to be an even cash flow type of problem so what we want to do then is consider what the payback period will be so what's going to be the payback period? Well, one way we can consider this is we can say, all right, let's just take a look at the years that we have. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I like to format them in, in this vertical type of format because that will allow us to basically uh, do a running balance. So then we want to see, okay, what's the, going to be the cash flow per year? First thing we have, of course, is the investment. So the cash flow investment we're going to have up top is the 249. So I'm going to say your zero 249 i'm putting negative of that number so it's going to be a negative cash flow cash going out in other words and we're going to say then that's going to help us with the cash inflow of these items so that purchase is going to help us to generate the cash inflow the purchase of the equipment and they're not even so uh, we're going to pick these numbers up these are our best estimates of the inflow so we're going to say this equals year one 48 6 year two 52 2 and year three is going to equal 75 9. we could auto fill this down as we will now so i'm going to auto fill the last two by putting our cursor on the 75 900 and using the auto fill to auto fill down like so so there's uh, year four and year five then we're going to do a nice feature within excel this is this is one of the reasons you want to use excel because we can do this nice kind of running balance very easily and say all right well where are we at at any given time obviously at the end of year zero we have paid that amount where are we at the end of year one this is a typical type of running balance type of calculation that's very nice in excel difficult to do when you have to do it on paper and pencil because it takes a lot of time it's a lot of tediousness but here quite easy to do we could say this is equal to well the last place we were at plus what happened in the current year so last time we had a uh, 249,000 negative balance now we had a cash flow increase 48,600 now we're at still negative 200,400 uh, obviously we want this negative balance to convert to positive at which point we will have paid back the the investment will have been paid back it will have in other words paid for itself so let's do this again we're gonna say okay how about year two well we had uh, still 204,000, 200,400 that we need to pay back plus the 52,200 uh, means that we're still in negative territory at 148,200. Well, what, what about at year three? Well, that equals the 148,200 plus the 75,200 that we expect to receive in year three and year four. So we're still in negative territory year four looks like this is going to be the one this is the one we're going to take the prior balance plus the 94 300 and now we're positive so that means looking at this running balance we're going to say well when is this going to pay for itself we're, we're investing this when is it going to basically pay itself off well <clears throat> somewhere between between year three and four when the negative balance in terms of the cash flow turns positive is where it happens so we know that much by this type of calculation somewhere between year three and four and then if we do the same thing for the last year we're going to say it's the prior balance plus the current uh flow and we get the 147. 
Now you could do this a lot faster, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna delete these and show you that we could also use, of course, the autofill function. Uh, I need one here, so I'm gonna say this equals the prior plus this item. We can't autofill this down because it's only equaling that number, but this one equals the one above it plus the one to the left. And if we autofill it down, Excel will automatically use the the relative cells, which is the one above it, the one to the left. If I if I autofill it down one time. Excel will say, oh yeah, well that one, the one above it, the one to the left, because they're relative cells. So auto, we don't have to do anything special. All we have to do is just copy this down, auto fill it down, we should say, I should say, and there we have it. And it, Excel will do what we expect it to do and uh, bring the relative references down or the, what, what is nice for Excel to do. So we'll say there's going to be our totals. So the total cash flow, if I sum up the total cash flow, over that time period, it comes to the ending balance. So most of the time, if we run a normal problem, this is easy to calculate. We get the ending cash flow, but it's nice in Excel to, to run that on a per year basis. This is the cash flow. This is the running balance. This is where we stand at the end of get any time period. That gives us the knowledge that we are between year three and four to get the payback period, that payback time. Well, what if we want some kind of specifics about where are we at between those two two years? We'll take a look at a ratio here to get the portion of the year. So I'm going to say here is the year three. Uh, we're looking at year three and year four, and we're going to pick up the balance number. So we're going to say the 72,300 is still outstanding. I'm going to pick it up with a negative of that 72,300 so that it flips the sign to a positive. And then we're going to look at year four. We're going to look at year four and we're going to pick up the cash flow for year four, 94,300. So this equals to 94,300. So if you think about this ratio, then of course we have, this is the amount at the end of the year three that we need to clear to cover in order to uh, break even, to be at a point of zero. This is the cash flow that happened in year four. So we're comparing what we need to, to basically get to the point of zero compared to the cash flow throughout the year, we're going to assume that this cash flow happens evenly throughout year four and therefore get the ratio of how long, you know, how many points or what percentage of year four that this happened in. So we'll do the ratio here. Here We're going to say, all right, here's the ratio. This equals the 72,300 divided by the 94,300. And that gives us a 0.8. Now, this is rounded, so if we go to the Home tab, Numbers, and increase the decimals, you'll see that it's it's not even. We're going to keep, keep it at a 0.8, or you can keep it at 2 if you'd like, 0.77. And then we're going to say adding to that the entire years, which are 3. Obviously, we had 3 full years. So then we're going to say the 3 plus the 0.77, 3.77. I'm going to format this so it's going to be the payback period. So that will be the payback period. So 3.77 is when we're going to have the cash flow payback. Now let's take a look at a break-even time. So we're going to consider the break-even time. The difference with the break-even time is we're going to take into consideration now the, pre the present value of money. So notice up here when we consider the payback period, we didn't present value anything. We just said, hey, it's going to be paying back itself within this time period. Now we're going to be considering uh, with the break even time, time value of money. So we're going to have our similar setup. We're going to say the years are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then we'll have our total. And then we're going to take our cash flows. Same kind of concept with the cash flows. The cash flows are going to say negative for the first item, which is going to be the investment. And then we have the positive cash flows, which are going to be equal to in year one, the 48,600. And we'll go ahead and copy that down. So I'm going to auto fill it down. It'll take the relative references. And there are our cash flows that we had in the prior situation as well. Now we're going to present value those and then take a look at our running balance so that we can look at these in terms of present value dollars. Now remember, zero because it's the first uh, year, or year zero, we don't have, we just, it's, it is what it is. That's, it's the same number. Now we're gonna present value the rest of the ones on the way down each year. So I'm gonna say this equals present value. Select the present value. We're gonna say the rate is going to be, 
Let's go up to our data up top. It's going to be the 9%. So that's going to be our return on investment. 9% is what we're looking for. And then we're going to say comma. And we're going to say the number of periods is going to be 1 and comma. And there's no payment. That's going to be 0 because this is, this is going to be not an annuity. The future value, the 48600 after 1 year is what we're looking for and enter. So let's, let's do that. Now we're, I'm going to flip the sign to make it positive. I'm going to double click on it. I usually just put a negative before the P. So we'll just put a negative. That'll flip the sign. I'm going to do the same thing. Instead of hitting equal, I'm going to put negative. So it'll flip the sign automatically. Present value. Select the present value formula. We want the rate. It's going to be up top 9%. And then we're going to say comma. A number of periods. 2 comma. And then the payment is zero, comma, future value 52,200, and enter. So there's the present value there. We're going to say present value of the third, year three. I'm going to say negative, present value, double click the present value, rate up top 9%, comma. And then we'll pick up the number of periods, which is three, comma, zero for the payment, comma. And then the future value, 75,900, and enter. Let's do it again. We'll say negative present value. Double click the present value. Rate is up top. And then we're going to say comma. Number of periods, four, comma. Payment, zero, comma. Future value, 94,300, and enter. One more time. Negative present value. Select the present value. Rate is up top, 9%. And then we're going to say comma. Number of periods, 5, comma, payment, 0, comma, future value, 125, and enter. Now, isn't there a faster way to do that? There is. So let's just check out the faster way. I'm going to delete these. Not this one because this isn't a present value. I want to see if we can autofill this formula down. We can. Uh, but we need to absolute reference this item. All these numbers are going to pull down. The rate, however, is being pulled from this number. So in other words, if I was to copy this down, autofill it down, it doesn't do what we would expect. The number's the same here. So I'd say, hmm, something's wrong. What's wrong? This cell got moved down, and we don't want it to move down. It picked up a zero for the interest rate. Okay, so we're going to say double-click on this item. This cell, B4, don't want it to move. Therefore, we're going to use an absolute reference. So I'm going to select this item. You can do that by selecting F4 or putting a dollar sign before the B and the 4 and enter. We only need a mixed reference, but I use an absolute reference. It doesn't hurt. And then we're going to add this down. So auto fill that down. And now it should do what we think it should. If I double click on it, it looks to be picking up the numbers that we would like it to pick up. So there we have that. If we sum up the cash flows, sum it up the cash flows. This is the cash flow. And this is the sum of the present value. So there's our present value. And now we want to have a running balance for the present value. So now we've, we've taken these to current dollars. We've brought every year back to current dollar uh, amounts. Now we can take a running balance with regard to present value numbers. So to do that, we're going to start off once again with the present value, same item, because it's at year zero. And then we'll say in year one, it's the prior balance plus the year one balance, enter. So we're not, you know, we're trying to find, of course, when it's going to flip from negative to positive, meaning that we're at a break even in terms of real dollars or in terms of dollars that have been accounted for with regards to present value timing. So we're going to say, all right, here's the 204.413 prior uh, period plus the current period, the current year, still negative. So we're going to say this equals the prior period plus the current period, 58.609, still negative. So we're going to say this equals the prior period plus the current period, 66.804, still negative. So we're going to say this equals the prior period plus the current period, uh, 81.241. And we finally flip to being a positive number. So when we consider when is this going to actually you know, pay back for itself or have a break even with regard to the present value of, of money as opposed to simply cash flow with the payback period. 
with the payback period, it happened between three years three and four in terms of cash flow. But when we present value, it happens sometimes between somewhere between year four and five. So then we could say, okay, well, where, you know, between year four and five. So we could say, okay, let's take the partial year, the partial prior year, which is going to be four. And we're going to pick up the 35. I'll make it a negative of this number. And then we're going to take the partial year five. So we'll take the partial year five. And we're going to pick up the 81 uh, to 41 and enter. And then if we divide those out, we're going to say this equals the 3564 <laughs> divided by the 81 to 41. And that's 0.43. So that's going to be the partial year. So the partial year. And then we're going to add to that the entire year, which was there were four entire years. And that, of course, will give us the break even time, which will be equal to four years, 0.43. 4.43. Let's go ahead and adjust the formatting of that. Bring this back down a bit. So there we have it.